Let's kick stuff off here. And we're going to start with the Microsoft 365 Admin Center Organizational Messages, which is now in preview for the Admin Center. Message Center ID 789803 and Roadmap ID 392847. So I'll set this one up and then we can kind of talk through it. So the Microsoft 365 Admin Center will soon introduce a preview of organizational messages. So if you've been using Microsoft Intune, you may have already seen this feature come up. This is expanding even further on that feature where you're no longer limited to just devices, but now you can just kind of push messages directly through the admin center through any of the Microsoft apps that are connected within your tenant. So this feature is an early preview. One of the things that they call out here is that the rollout is going to begin in preview in May. So this month, and there's more details under that roadmap ID, and we'll show some screenshots here in a moment. But the big kind of key things to prepare for here are making sure that you understand how you can access the policies, how you assign people to be able to actually author policies and approve policies so that they can go out as messages to your users. Um, and also making sure that you understand any potential costs that may come with this down the line, because they do call that out, is that in preview, there's no licensing cost to this, but they may decide to pivot on that slightly at some point in the future as it gets closer to going live. So I'd go as far as saying you can probably count on the fact that they're going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does cost extra with the Intune suite, so I wouldn't be surprised at all to see that it may, it, at the very least, probably sit at an E3 license or an E5 license or have like an additional standalone bump up cost to it. Yeah. So Chris, what are your thoughts on the feature? I mean, I think that it's it's a win-win for everybody, you know, until they d decide that it's going to cost a couple extra bucks a month. But I mean, it's it's something that I think has been long asked for by organizations. Yeah, definitely a highly desired capability that it's, it's funny how some of these things work where if you go back far enough, 20 plus years ago, there was some of this kind of functionality in things like the .NET form you know, operating systems at the time and in, in the old school days of like Windows 2000 and that sort of thing for administrators to be able to send through Active Directory messages. And it's sort of been resurrected, thankfully, to, to be able to do more of that again. I think obviously the, the, bitter, the bigger difference this time is being able to proffer it through the application themselves, not just the operating system solely. You know, meet those users where they are, more, more likely to be spending time and able to um, view, those, view those messages What's been interesting too with this particular development of Microsoft bringing this capability into M365 apps and, and, and Windows 11 itself is you mentioned a few minutes ago, the, the Intune corollary where there's been organizational messages in Intune for, I don't know, a year or two now. It was a lot more limited, it seemed like, in how much you could customize those messages and where they could show up and how they could show up. This looks to be a lot more flexible and yep. a lot more malleable to be able to create a lot of custom messages and set different policies about who they can go to, when they're going to go, where they're going to show up, all that stuff. So this, to me, strikes me as much more practical for everyday utilization in most organizations and probably is going to have a lot more benefit to just being able to operationalize it on, on a common basis. Although, just like anything, you know, there, there's the potential for abuse where if you just hit people with messages seven, eight times a day, yeah, they just gonna, them. people just, yeah, they're not going to pay attention to them. So I think I, it's going to force everyone to have to be somewhat judicious with how they meet out the administrative permissions to even create and, and distribute these, but then also put some gateways or approval. I believe it has an approval process built into it as it well, does, but yep. have, have the ability to sort of filter those and, and make sure that only the right ones go out at the right time. I think the most interesting piece for me is how they layered this into the admin center right now is it's mm -hmm. layered in under reports which I feel like this should probably have its own separate tab, or maybe it should be under resources. It's kind of a weird spot to put it, but if you look at the screenshot, and I'll blow this up for the screen too, so you can see it a little bit better, but it looks like, at least in the example screenshot that they have, they show you being able to deliver it through Windows Spotlight, being able to deliver it to the Windows taskbar, or even the Windows notification area. So in Intune right now, I believe, and I could be wrong about this, is the main way that it's delivered is through the Windows taskbar. You get like a little box that shows up on the Windows taskbar next to all of your pinned icons, and then you click on that and it shows you. So the big change here, and honestly, this is what should help catch users' attention a little bit more. And I'm going to open this up and we'll see how well it looks here. And again, I'll blow this up so it looks a little bit better on the screen is, but 
if you come over kind of to the side and I'll zoom in here quite a bit is sure. you can kind of see that it's popping up from the bottom of the task bar there. So it just basically pops up like any, any normal toast notification would. So hopefully that grabs users attention. And I don't know if there'll be a way that you can configure how long it sits there, or does the user actually have to interact with it for it to go away. But I think that this will be a big, a big improvement for users within the organization, especially when you're trying to deliver important news that commonly you would do through email or through a right. Yammer site or through your internet. And you know that, you know, people just a lot of times I've worked for a number of different organizations that believe that, oh, if we put it on the front page of the internet and we force the first page you open when you open Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer, whatever you were using at the time, to be the internet, everybody will read that. But what everyone does is they open the browser and they just go immediately to what they're looking at because that home page that you forced on them just became noise. Right. Um, so I think that a new way to deliver these messages like that will be helpful. I know one of the ones that we've done in the past and will probably be helpful for organizations here as well is if we're doing forced like security vulnerability updates is that will pop up at the bottom and say, make sure that you leave your, your computer on your desk and turned on overnight. You're getting the newest update to windows 11 over the weekend or something like that. Is that if you keep prompting them with that, that that'll help out. You know, there's, there's another circumstance that I think probably if used appropriately could have a pretty significant impact, which is outages and communicating yeah. things that often just in service desk context, we see bombard service desk. Oh, mail, email goes down or, you know, some other application isn't working. Well, you know, we've worked with enough companies that are like, man, if we really could have a way to just get to these users ahead of it so that they're not bombarding our service desk and now our queue is filling up and our SLAs are all out of yep. whack all of a sudden, here, we can empower the service desk operations to be able to proactively communicate. Yes, we know there's an outage, we're working on it, so don't bother calling in. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, I think could have an equal weighting of value to a lot of companies, even if they don't use it as much for proactive notifications. Yeah, and if you if your service them. desk manager is an author and can come right. in here and publish these is, and I put the some templates on the screen while you're talking about that too, because this is super helpful, is they're actually helping you build the messages through these kind of different types of templates, rather than you having to go in there and key it in each and every time. But yeah, I, I agree is that this is a way that your user doesn't even necessarily need to call the service desk to hear that IVR message that's telling you on the front end that, oh yeah, we know that there's a problem and we're working on it. It's just gonna pop up right on their computer. The question is, and we haven't done any practicing on this in theory in our own org yet, because you know we're just, it's early. This is just going into preview now is when you click the button, how soon does the message actually go out? Does it yeah. go into a queue? Does it hit a batch of 50 computers at a time? Does it go out one by one? That's something in theory that I think is gonna need to be tested before this actually, before we can at least sign off on it and say that it's good for an org. Not only that, but maybe this could be the logic of putting it in the reports section other than just maybe they felt like, hey, we don't have enough stuff in there. We got all these other sections with all these features and this reports one only has a couple items in it normally, but is once we get our hands on it, figuring out how much of that, to your point, uh, input back, that log ability of, is there any way to confirm that users observed this? Like, were they logged into their machine when it popped up? And having so I'm glad you asked that question back. because in the reports area, there actually does appear to be a total message is sent, total oh, yeah, click and click through rate. So that, that that will be helpful to actually see who's paying attention. So like when you send, for example, on the third line there, when you send a thousand of these and you only get an 11% click through rate, well, yeah. does that mean that because you sent it through the task bar, people didn't see it as opposed to maybe the notification center having that 22% click rate, or is it just you know, users just ignore it and let it go away on its own. Also, will clicking it be able to take you to a page to provide you even more notification information about what's happening? Sure. Or is it just that short little, like that legacy Twitter message where you could only send what was it like a hundred or 200 yeah. characters or something like that? So I have to think, yeah, they'll have some pretty strict thresholds on character amounts and stuff. Cause you, otherwise this thing could end up with the whole screen and then something yeah. tells me that they're, they're just not going to allow for things like that. And then I, I did want to highlight to you, this is, not that surprising, but I think a trend we'll continue to see grow and grow is limitations like, hey, Windows 11 and, and, and newer, right? So the Windows 10, you know, M365 apps only, not, you know, Office 2016, just that reliance that or that requirement that you're going to be 
or that they're going to require people to be on the newer versions of the operating system and in this case the the productivity suite is, is a trend that's just going to i mean this is just indicative of where that's all continuing yep. to go yeah, good call out, especially with, you know, Windows 10 getting closer and closer and closer to its end of life here. Yep. Um, one other thing I wanted to call out before we jump to the next one, though, is so they do provide you with a little bit more information about taking next steps and what you need to do to prepare and what you need to do to prepare essentially outside of enabling certain policies in your organization for it to work is you need to assign people to the author approval. And it looks like you don't have to assign the recipient role, which whew, thank goodness, right? <laughs> Um, but that would generally just be all users. But they make the recommendation that authors and approvers could be global administrators. And yeah, sure, that's going to work. But don't assign someone in your organization that's going to send these messages or approve them the GA role. That use the use the use the or, organizational messages writer and approver roles instead. Yeah. In testing, if you're doing this in a demo tenant, sure, you can use a GA to see how it works. Um, but in your live environment. You want as little GA permissions out there as possible, generally seven or less, especially right. as you're trying to adhere to zero trust. Chris, anything else? No, just exciting to see this come to fruition and excited to play with it.